This lesson is on linear functions. We'll start out with a definition and dive right into some examples. So a linear function is a function whose graph is a straight line. You might not be surprised to hear. Um, more specifically or, or equivalently, a linear function is one that can be written in this form, which I suspect you've seen, y equals mx plus b. And finally, and crucially from a modeling standpoint, linear functions describe increase or decrease of some quantity at a fixed amount per unit change in input. Okay, and we'll come back to that point. Let's go to some examples now. Uh, Temperature conversion. So you might be familiar with this calculation. If you want to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you take Fahrenheit, you subtract 32, you multiply by 5 ninths, and that gives you degrees Celsius. That's a linear function. Um, translation from dollars to euros, in case you're traveling to one of the eurozone countries. Take the amount in dollars, and right now you'd multiply by 0.76 to get the amount in euros. That's also a linear function. Another one you might be familiar with, the distance d covered in t hours when you're driving at a speed r. Well, the distance is equal to the rate times time. It's also a linear function. Um, and finally, Okun's law, which relates the percentage increase y in annual U.S. production during a year when unemployment changes by a certain percent, u, which we think of as being the independent variable. And that function is y equals 3.5 minus 2u, also a linear function. So we will talk in this course a lot about the parameters of functions, right? So functions have certain quantities in them, which as you change those quantities might change the shape or position of the, of the function. And in the linear function y equals mx plus b, b is the y-intercept, right? So we've already talked about intercepts in this course. Um, the y-intercept specifies the value of the dependent variable y when the independent variable is zero, right? Um, so in this case, we can ask what the intercept is for the function y equals 2x, and I go to x equals zero, right? And that's right here, and I have to look at what the y value is there, and it's zero. So for the function y equals 2x, the y-intercept turns out to be y equals 0. Um, we can ask what happens if we increase or decrease that y-intercept, if we change this value of b in the equation. And what that does is it moves the graph of the line up and down, right? So here's y equals 2x. Here's y equals 2x plus 3. We get a parallel line that's been shifted up by 3 units. Okay, on the other hand, what if instead of adding 3, we subtract 3, and that shifts the line down, right? So everything is three units lower for y equals 2x minus 3. All right, then we have this parameter here, the slope, okay? And the slope specifies how much y changes for a given change in x, right? And I want to make that really concrete because it's the crux of what a linear function is, right? So if we have like something like y equals 4x minus 1, um, this slope 4 means that if I were to increase x by 1, so you imagine adding 1 on to x, y would increase by 4 times 1, which is 4. If I were to increase whatever is my value of x by 3, y would increase by 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay, so that's the slope here. Now over here, I'm showing you the line y equals minus 2x. Since it has a, since it has a negative slope, it goes from kind of upper left to lower right. And we'll imagine now increasing the slope from that negative value, right? So there's y equals minus 2x. There's y equals minus x. It still has a negative sl slope, but it's less steep. Here's y equals 0x. That's a horizontal line. Here's y equals 1x. So now we're in the land of positive slope. We've kind of rotated it even further counterclockwise. And here, y equals 2x. All right. Since a line has only one slope, we can assess if data is linear by checking if the slope is the same between all points. I cannot emphasize this strongly enough. This is an idealized version of what will happen in the real world. In the real world, data is rarely, or I would say never going to look exactly linear. So if you have some data that comes from some you know, biological or physical experiment you've done, and you check for the line to be the, uh, the slope to be the same between pairs of points, it will never be exactly the same. However, it might be close. And what you do when it's close um, is probably use a computer to figure out the line that comes closest um, to passing through all those points. And that's something we'll talk about later in this course. So this example we're going to do, this is a very idealized example, just to make the concept clear. 
And the example is the recommended dosage of the antibiotic tobramycin as a function of body weight. Okay, so as a function of body weight, that means body weight, which we're calling W, that's the independent variable. And the dependent variable is going to be the recommended dosage, which we're calling D. Okay, we're going to measure weight in pounds, dosage in milligrams. We see a bunch of data here, and the first thing that it's natural to do is to plot that data. And you say, wow, um, that data really looks like it might lie along a line, and then we could start checking some slopes, right? So um, I could choose the points uh, that have a, um, these first two points, where the weight is 88 and the weight is uh, 99, and where the recommended dosage is 40 and the dosage is 45. And the slope would be the change in the dependent variable dosage divided by the change in the independent variable. So that's 45 minus 40 over 99 minus 88, or 5 elevenths milligrams per pound. Okay, then we could do the same thing for a different pair of points. Say we choose um, 110 and 143, for which the function has values 50 and 65. So the slope then would be 65 minus 50 over 143 minus 110, and that's 15 over 33, or again, 5 elevenths milligrams per pound. That's the same. And you could check various other combinations. For this idealized data, you'll find that the slope between any pair of points is always the same, 5 elevenths milligrams per pound. We can now go ahead and try to finish off the equation of this particular line. Um, we know that we have something of the form y equals mx plus b with m equals 5 elevenths, and we can just choose a point to substitute in to figure out the y-intercept b. So I write y equals 5 elevenths x plus b. We choose y equals 55 when x is 121. We solve this equation for b, and we find out that actually it's 0. So in this case, the line has simply the equation um, y equals 5 elevenths x. Okay, so for this example, y-intercept just happens to be 0. We've reached the end of this lesson. I want you to ask yourself if you can do the following things. Can you explain linear functions in words, equations, and graphs? Can you describe the effects of varying the parameters in linear functions? That's the slope and the y-intercept. And can you assess whether given data is linear? And if so, model it. All right, thanks for listening.